Hello, I'm Amelia Broon. You're watching Seven's Afternoon News live from Perth. Coming up... Perth prepares for Phase 4 freedoms. Nightclubs, health clubs, gambling and games all back on the agenda. Panic buying has returned, sparking a fresh round of grocery restrictions. What you need to know ahead of your next supermarket shop. Liam Ryan's family at the centre of a new racism storm. How an online post sparked a fierce backlash. Homes and offices raided and MPs stood down as the New South Wales Labor Party is rocked by a major spy investigation. And a major coup for Australian sport, winning the bid to host the Women's World Cup for the first time. After months of COVID hibernation, Perth nightlife is back at midnight. Venues that have been shut since March are getting ready to welcome crowds in numbers the state government says are the envy of the world. Cyan Doherty has more. It's been just over three months since the court nightclub's dance floor was used as a dance floor. But at 11.59 tonight, these chairs and tables will be replaced with people the minute WA enters phase four. The court is one of several venues opening the moment restrictions lift. From midnight, there won't be any gathering limits as long as the two square metre rule is followed, which means nightclubs are back in business. We are in this enviable position that we can open and we can enjoy ourselves again. In phase four, you can order a drink without food and stand while you drink it. All events are back on, except big music festivals. Small gigs are OK and Perth musicians are ready to play. Stadiums, gambling, gyms without staff will all be allowed with restrictions. There were no new cases of COVID-19 in WA today. There are still four active cases. As we enter State 4, the state government says WA leads the world. But the health minister's warned it might not last. We tell you why in 7 News at 6. A fresh round of panic buying in the east has forced supermarkets to impose restrictions on items across the country. From today, Coles has limited sales of toilet paper and paper towel to just one pack per person. Woolworths has limited sales to two of each per customer. It follows restrictions imposed earlier this week in Victoria in response to fears of a second lockdown. Heavily armed police and detectives launched a lightning raid with guns drawn in Belmont just a few hours ago. Crime reporter Joey Catanzaro joins us live from the scene. Joey, this was a gang crime operation. Millie, that's right. Armed officers surrounded the home behind me just before midday and demanded the surrender of a man inside. It's believed he has links to a Perth bikie gang and gave himself up without a fight. But tensions were running high after a Commodore left the target house. Gang crime detectives intercepted and surrounded the vehicle, we're told, with weapons drawn. Inside the car, they say, was this sawn-off shotgun. The driver was taken into custody along with the other man. Officers spent some time searching the car and the property, which it is believed was being rented short term. Here's what witnesses had to say. I was um, just inside and I just heard over the loudspeaker um, the um, armed forces just saying that uh, place is surrounded. I just looked out the window and just seen a couple of guys with um, guns just pointed at the house. It's understood today's arrests were the result of a major police operation. We'll bring you more details at six o'clock. Millie. Joey, thank you. A racism storm has erupted online after an Instagram user posted an offensive emoji on a photo of Liam Ryan's three children. Ryan's partner Ivana shared the comment to her own account with the caption, here we go again, attack my babies. But no, racism doesn't happen in Australia. It sparked this response from the West Coast Eagles. Oh, it's, it's, it's just disappointing. I mean, all we can do is educate, um, educate people and you know, there's not much you can do about it other than, you know, if you see something, say something and educate as best you can. It's not the first time the family's been targeted. Tonight at six, a warning for all social media users.
For the first time ever, Australia will host a major football tournament. The Women's World Cup is coming to Australia and New Zealand in 2023. Players are ecstatic, organisers too. Now the work begins to deliver a tournament to remember. Rory Campbell has the details. The massive announcement came in the early hours of this morning as part of Australia and New Zealand's successful bid. Perth is a chance of hosting games at almost every stage of the Women's World Cup. The announcement was reminiscent when Australia landed the Sydney Olympics. Australia. Yeah! If Perth does get a good spread of games, it'll increase the chances that the Matildas will play here. That'd give Perth superstar Sam Kerr an opportunity most players never get, to play a World Cup match in her hometown. When I first started in the Matildas, we could barely get a, a home Matildas friendly match. And now we're going to be hosting the biggest tournament for women's football. Um, to do it in Perth would be a dream come true. HBF Park is the ground that was part of the bid. It holds just over 22,000, far fewer than Optus Stadium. The fixtures haven't been locked in, but there are some significant hurdles to overcome if a match was to be played at Optus Stadium. There's a lot of demands by FIFA at this very early stage that kind of preclude Optus as an option, but that doesn't mean as they get closer and they, if they uh, become more comfortable about what they're requirements are that it couldn't be there. The announcement comes at an opportune time for Australia and WA with the economy reeling because of COVID-19. The tournament might be three years away, but the money it'll bring is welcome. COVID's a long road. Uh, we'll be on a long economic road ahead of us. Uh, we're doing our best in difficult circumstances, but this is a boost. In the news at six, more on how this tournament will be historic for both the game and Australia. A man has been sentenced to more than two years behind bars after he bashed a father with a tyre lever in 2018. Adam Paul Wright pleaded guilty to grievous bodily harm last month. His victim, Rodney Naif, needed staples in the front and back of his head following the attack, which was triggered by road rage. Probably no amount of time which can be given to, to the gentleman to, uh, to reflect the pain and impact that it's had actually on me. Wright will be eligible for parole after he's served half his sentence. A man in his 20s is being questioned by police after his car ploughed into a church on Camberwarra Drive in Craigie last night. The sedan took out a tree and a sign before it crashed. I heard this loud swerving and then he crashed into across the road. And um, around that time there were helicopters and all that. The driver was taken to Joondalup Hospital with minor injuries. A 29-year-old pedestrian has died after she was hit by a car being driven by someone she knows. Police say the two women were fighting just before the deadly Joondalup collision, which happened on Wednesday, June 17. The victim died in hospital three days later. Police want any witnesses or anyone with dash cam video to come forward. Melbourne's massive testing blitz is underway in hotspot suburbs. Ambulances are being sent to residential streets and pop-up clinics set up in trouble areas. Well, we are now fortunate enough to be able to have some time, spend some time with someone who is on the front line of dealing with the COVID-19 situation in Melbourne's hotspots. And that's uh, nurse Hermani Misra. Hermani, just tell us, is, has there been a change, a noticeable change today in terms of people's attitudes to being tested? Yeah, sure. So I've noticed that more people are becoming aware of why they need to be tested. So hence, we're actually getting more people getting tested for that reason, which is a great sign. You've yeah. been involved in this for six weeks now. What yeah. Has that changed over that, that period of time? Um, yeah, so, I mean, over the six weeks, I've noticed that there has been a tremendous increase in um, numbers, obviously. After the restrictions were put off, the Victoria's had an increase in numbers. People are actually coming down. Parents are getting tested. Kids, obviously, there are a few school, uh, schools around Melbourne that, are, that have had a breakout. Um, they're obviously getting tested, but even even parents, you know, they're getting tested, which is which shows that um, people are actually willing um, to do the right thing. And do you feel like the testing process is improving, becoming more streamlined? Definitely, the testing process has been improved. We're getting the results within three days for everyone, so patients who are symptomatic and asymptomatic, which is a great sign. 
Amani, thanks so much for your time. Thanks very much for your work, especially right now. We're here at the showgrounds. This is one of the, the biggest setups at the moment. They're going to be expanding the number of testing stations here over the weekend. A New South Wales MP is being suspended from the Labor Party under investigation over alleged links to Chinese espionage. Police raided the home of Upper House member Shaquette Mosselmain in Sydney's south earlier today in one of the most significant inquiries in recent ASIO history. Olivia Leeming has more. The Prime Minister says today's events show Australia will not tolerate foreign interference in a veiled warning to Beijing. After Australian Federal Police officers searched Mr Mosselmain's home for evidence, joined by a forensic team combing three vehicles parked outside as part of this joint investigation between the AFP and ASIO into suspected interference by the Chinese government in our political system. The Upper House MP refusing to comment as he left. Detectives also attending his office at the New South Wales Parliament. No charges have yet been laid. Prime Minister says the allegations are being taken seriously. We won't cop anyone coming and seeking to interfere in our political system, uh, in our energy sector, uh, in any area of um, perceived um, area of opportunity for an outside actor. In a statement, ASIO has emphasised the raids do not relate to any specific threat to the community. Mr Mosselmain's been a controversial supporter of China, forced to stand down as Assistant President of the New South Wales Legislative Council over his pro-China stance, taking nine trips to the country since 2009, with the Chinese government covering some of his costs. On one trip, criticising Australia's tough foreign interference laws. He's also called for a new world order and repeatedly praised President Xi Jinping's handling of coronavirus. Here he is in February. Can I just say that the Chinese government should be commended for the immediate action that it took because it was contained so much in, in China. Um, that meant that the rest of the world had not been affected. Uh, as it would have if those measures were not taken. Earlier this year, the head of ASIO, Mike Burgess, warned the agency was prepared to name and shame foreign actors if they're exposed as interfering in our political system. The investigation may take some weeks to complete, creating further headaches for Labor, already under pressure over the Victorian branch stacking scandal. Though no word today from the federal opposition leader, Anthony Albanese. His office maintains this is a state issue. Virgin Airlines has a new owner. An American private equity group has become the operator after a rival with links to Richard Branson dropped out. Well, earlier today, it looked like negotiations for Virgin's future had stalled with Cyrus Capital announcing it was withdrawing its bid. But just hours later, Bain Capital announced it has bought Virgin Australia. The administrators of the company announcing that they have entered into a sale and implementation deed uh, with Bain Capital. The deal comes after months of uncertainty following Virgin's entry into voluntary administration back in April. Under the agreement of sale, Bain has promised to keep as many Virgin jobs as possible and honour staff entitlements. It will also honour customers' travel credits and keep the Velocity Rewards program. This afternoon, Virgin welcomed the news in a statement saying, this is a great day for Virgin Australia and a huge milestone. We know they are committed to investing in the airline and we are thrilled to be working with them into the future. One big question which hasn't been answered though is how many Virgin jobs will be lost in the restructure. We know the airline will be streamlined and it's a difficult time for the whole aviation industry with so many flights grounded because of coronavirus. Just yesterday Qantas axed 6,000 jobs. The federal government needs to bring forward its review of the JobKeeper system and make it clear that it is going to put in place an appropriate package in aviation. In the meantime, we understand more details on exactly what the new Virgin Australia will look like will be announced next week. We have new developments now on the future of Qantas. Chief Executive Alan Joyce says he's had constructive talks with the Prime Minister as calls grow for JobKeeper to be extended to help the struggling aviation sector. 15,000 staff remain stood down. 6,000 positions will be made redundant. Mr Joyce says the tough decision provides certainty. 
they'll get that money and they can go on and find jobs. That's a lot better than standing them down for years with no prospect of, the, of those jobs coming back. We have to be honest and the union should be thanking us for doing the right thing by the people. Mr Joyce says that because of Qantas's position, they haven't needed to cut as many jobs as other major airlines. A severe shortage of beers from two of Australia's biggest brewers has seen pubs across WA battle to fill their cool rooms. As Rob Scott reports, one Fremantle pub almost ran dry before a local brewer stepped up and saved the day. The Federal Hotel here in Fremantle very nearly became the pub with no beer, a situation the publican Nick Duran just couldn't believe. He says after COVID restrictions eased over the weekend of the 6th of June, a rush of people eager to head out for a drink saw his keg beer supplies almost completely exhausted. Normally, that wouldn't have been an issue, but major problems with the big brewers, Carlton United and Lion, meant he couldn't and still can't replenish all of his supplies. I know there's a song about it, but I was sitting there going, I would, I would move heaven and hell not to be that guy, that publican who has no beer. Normally, the Federal has 17 different types of beer on tap. It got down to just four after that weekend, with only six kegs left in the cool room. Nick says despite contracts with the major brewers, he couldn't get any more. You can have packaged beer, but we don't go out for that. We go for one off the wood. And that was a serious threat. But local brewer Gage Rhodes stepped in, rushing to plug the shortage and ease Nick's frayed nerves. If they're going to drop the ball, we're going to scoop it up and we're going to try to kick a goal for WA. It's a problem not just limited to the federal. Gage Rhodes says it was flooded with SOS calls for help from venues across the state and was only too happy to help. We've sold about 3,000 kegs for the month of June. Last year we would have sold about 1,500. So what's behind the shortage and when will it end? I'll have those details in the news tonight at 6 o'clock. You're watching Perth's Afternoon News live from Perth. Coming up, a pilot's incredible survival after his plane's crash landing. Plus, thousands ignore warnings for a day at the beach. See the pictures that have sparked outrage. And the debate over face masks fires up again on the US campaign trail. The $100,000 black mark against your name. Even though you do the right thing for so long, you get penalised. How you can fix it before tax time. 7 News, tonight. For the first time in its 350-year history, the hotel has agreed to open its doors to cameras. The most exclusive tour. It's like living in downtown Abbey. See where the newest royal stayed before that big day. Meghan Walker was here. The extraordinary Clifton Hotel, tonight on 7-2. Join AHM Hospital and Extras Direct and you'll get six weeks free. Plus, we'll waive any two and six month waits on extras. Yay! Whether you're a single, a couple, or a family. It's that simple. Uh, that doesn't look very simple. Offer ends June 30. Find out more and join AHM Direct today. AHM, the simple bit. Rarely seen, but always there for us. Our Australian donors have continually provided vital support. Now more than ever, we thank you for your mercy and compassion toward the forgotten poor in Africa. Mercy Ships. Get moving. Furniture Bazaar's end of financial year sale is here. Get the Palmer Recliner Suite for $1,099. The Aberdeen Bedroom Suite, 30% off. And the Zeus Lounge, now only $14.99. Furniture Bazaar. Get vegged. Super tasty vegetarian meal solutions for everyone to enjoy. Packed full of flavour, loaded with veggies and free from artificial colours, flavours and preservatives. Get healthy, get vegged. Introducing the Miracle Chef Air Fryer Oven. The full oven that can air fry 75% more than traditional air fryers. What's the secret? Our stainless airflow racks and 1500 watts of rapid air technology fries food with a whirlwind of superheated air for that great crispy taste without all the added fat and calories. Air fried chicken strips, wings and tasty sea salt curly fries. And all made with that amazing fried food taste without the guilt and up to 70% less calories from fat compared to 
deep frying. And here's exciting news. The Miracle Chef Air Fryer Oven is a chef quality air fryer, rotisserie and a food dehydrator all in one. It features a state-of-the-art touchscreen with 10 presets. With one touch, you can rotisserie, dehydrate, air fry, roast, bake, use it as a pizza oven, grill, toast and reheat. And all accessories are dishwasher safe, so cleanup is a breeze. The Miracle Chef replaces over $1,500 in appliances. But you won't pay $1,500, not even $500. Call Global Shop Direct or go online now and you can get the Miracle Chef air fryer oven for the low price on your screen. But this deal gets even better. Call now and get bonus number one, the extra large rotating stainless mesh basket. Amazing for French fries and street nuts. Bonus number two, our stainless rotisserie spit. Perfect for restaurant style rotisserie chicken and bacon weaved stuffed turkey. Bonus number three, we're also including eight stainless skewers. Carve them table style or serve the whole skewer. Bonus number four, we'll also include our entire Miracle Chef Air Fryer Oven Library. All three books included with your order today. And Miracle Chef comes with Global Shop Direct's 30 day money back guarantee. You get everything you see here, all for this one incredible price. Don't miss out on this incredible TV offer. Order your Miracle Chef Air Fryer Oven today. You're watching 7's 4pm news live from Perth. Right now in the city it's 21 with clear skies. It was a different story earlier today though when Perth woke up to fog blanketing the city. These pictures capturing the morning haze. The forecast is coming up soon. England has been enjoying a summer heat wave, but as the hot weather swept in, out went all common sense. Thousands crammed onto beaches, ignoring social distancing. There are fears it'll lead to hundreds more cases of coronavirus. Hugh Whitfeld has more from London. In theory, the lockdown still exists here. In Britain, pubs and cafes are still closed, but it didn't stop people heading down to the beach on the south coast of England, flooding beaches in places like Brighton and Bournemouth. It did appear that it was very difficult to practice social distancing as the heat reached 33 degrees here in the UK. In Bournemouth, they declared a major incident to bring in extra resources to try and disperse the crowds from the beach. Oh, I think it's nice because we've been stuck in for so long. I just feel like it's something else to do. But there is a lot of people here. <laughs> Feels like Corona isn't really a thing now. But obviously it is. I'm enjoying it. Today is really nice weather, yeah? Guns out, guns out. It was a really hot day. I thought I'd take advantage of it. Coronavirus is still very real here in the UK. 149 people have died from coronavirus just in the last 24 hours. And England's chief medical officer has warned that if people don't practice social distancing, then cases will rise. Here in London, it does appear that there is a huge amount of lockdown fatigue. Police were called to break up what they've described as an unlicensed music event. What it really was was a street party that got completely out of hand. Revellers in Brixton turned on police when they tried to break up the party. 22 police officers were injured, two required hospital treatment, just four people were arrested and police here in London are warning that they will have extra patrols out and about to monitor illegal events like that while the lockdown continues. We have some incredible pictures to show you now. This is the moment a homemade light plane came into land at an airport in California. Watch closely. The pilot botches the touchdown, bouncing off the tarmac and back into the air. He then careers past the landing strip before banking and rolling, coming down hard in a ditch. Fearing the worst, firefighters rushed to the crash site, but they found the pilot inside, alive and well, with nothing more than a few bruises. He was taken to hospital for checks, federal air crash investigators have been called in. The United States COVID-19 situation could be much worse than reported. The Centre of Disease Control and Prevention says cases may be as high as 23 million, 10 times more than the official figures. The report comes as government inspectors have discovered the US Treasury mistakenly sent more than $2 billion of its pandemic rescue funds to dead people. Since March, US Congress has pumped $3.8 trillion into its economy. 
Meanwhile, face masks have become a hot-button issue in the United States after some heated debates over being required to wear them. New data estimates masks have helped prevent almost half a million cases in the US and could save tens of thousands of lives. Across the United States, wearing a face mask is dividing. This is a planned demic. This is totally political and you know it. After Washington's governor ordered everyone to wear a mask, a local sheriff had different advice. Don't be a sheep. In Arizona, where cases are exploding, a city councillor mocked a mask order. I can't breathe! I can't breathe! He later apologised, insisting he wasn't trying to echo the words of George Floyd. The backlash comes despite data showing a mask can make a big difference. The University of Washington now projects the US death toll will climb from 120,000 today to 180,000 by October, but requiring masks could save 33,000 lives. If we don't have widespread mask use as we head into the fall and cases are going up, we're going to end up shutting down the economy to save lives. So far, many states that have required masks have seen COVID cases drop, as states that only recommend masks have seen cases increase. While the president's top experts have urged the public to go along... Make sure you wear a mask. Donald Trump has only been seen wearing a mask once. Some argue ordering people to wear them goes too far. I think coronavirus is real, but it, so is the flu, so is a lot of different viruses, and we just got to live our life and take precaution where necessary, but we got to keep going. Others say it's a civic duty. I'm wearing a mask to protect everyone, protect myself, protect our community. If you're not wearing your mask, you're just thinking about yourself. In the United States, Paul Kadak, 7 News. Parts of the Roe Highway will be closed this weekend. Details next. Plus, the bitter battle over a suburban boundary taken all the way to the Supreme Court. And after three months, the City of Light welcomes back visitors to its biggest attraction. was aging. I was getting younger. The Academy Award winning masterpiece, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, tonight on 7. Beat the cold at Harvey Norman with the best in heating and air treatment solutions. Stay warm this winter with our range of ceramic, radiant and fan heaters. Convection, column and panel heaters. The latest in gas and electric flame effect models. Heated throws and electric blankets plus a huge range of reverse cycle air conditioners. Treat the air quality in your home with everything from air purifiers to humidifiers. Harvey Norman has all the big brands at great prices. Visit us in store or online. Harvey Norman, your heating and air treatment specialist. Go! Health cover costs just seem to keep going up. I'm not sure I can afford it. Well, HBF has cancelled its rate increase until April 2021. Get a quote today. It's ABC's end of financial year sale with up to 50% off rollers, vertical blinds, furniture blinds, outdoor blinds, vision blinds and shutters. Drive now, pay later on selected Volkswagen Amarox and vans. Hit the ground rolling with your first three monthly repayments on us. Plus, get a 1.99% interest rate. Volkswagen. Treat yourself to a smooth, delicious barista-made McCafe coffee and we could treat you to a free coffee every day for a year. Drive through and buy any McCafe drink and go in the running to be your local McCafe winner. Anaconda's Super Stock Day Sale is on now. All tents by June 4 Wheel Drive, Austral and Spinifex, half price. All sleeping bags by June 4 Wheel Drive, Denali and Spinifex, half price. Head in store or shop online at anacondastores.com. Anaconda! Hanging out for Spudshed's weekly specials? Then head to spudshed.com.au for all our crazy cheap specials. And start saving a spud loan. At Spudshed, we grow it, we sell it, you save.
It's Retrovision's half yearly clearance, and we're celebrating with storewide savings you won't want to miss. Save on all the big brands across entertainment, kitchen, laundry, tech, cleaning, and more. Don't miss our half yearly clearance in store and online at Retrovision. Pay less every day at The Good Guys. $200 off this Sony TV, this Hisense fridge only $445, this Samsung soundbar only $349, and this new triple at only $69. Plus, loads more only at The Good Guys. At HCF, Australia's largest not-for-profit health fund, we've always put our members first, knowing the importance of care when it counts. And it's never counted more than now. That's why we're giving eligible members access to our holistic mental wellbeing program and the flexibility to choose what works for you. It's not just about guiding you to the right care at the right time, but getting you the mental health support you need quicker and easier than before. Because uncertain times call for uncommon care. A fiery neighbourhood dispute over a fence in Balcatta that's been raging for years is headed for the High Court. A retired couple erected the eyesore to block their neighbours' security cameras. But as Ben Downey reports, not even a court order or thousands of dollars in fines have made them bring it down. This fight over a fence began back in 2016, but even after today's ruling, there's little sign of it stopping anytime soon. At over two metres tall, it's easy to see why the structure built from scaffolding, shade cloths and styrofoam sparked the squabble. Stopping my neighbour to record me, stopping the lights coming in my eye, it's, it's there for a reason. At the beginning of the saga, council officers tried to resolve the dispute in an effort to get the fence taken down. The city of Stirling says the fence breaches local law, it wasn't approved and isn't made out of acceptable materials but months of mediation did little to quell the residents' rage. I pay now no one cent and I stay that way. I can go into jail. Zhivko wants an admission from the council and state government claiming they've got no power to force him to take the fence down because he believes it's a civil dispute. Now the legal bill stands at $8,000 and rising, but he says the fence stays. You can't go against the government, but I said you can. You can, because the government can be wrong. Both homeowners have taken out restraining orders against each other. Mr Kezic's neighbours declined to comment. I have to rebel, because how can you put a restraining order on me when I do nothing wrong to you? Tune in at 6pm, where we'll bring you CCTV footage showing just how hostile this neighbourly dispute has become. New cutting-edge technology has arrived at Royal Perth Hospital to help improve the lives of patients undergoing cardiac procedures. The $1.5 million imaging system is the first of its kind in WA and one of just 50 in the world. The machine will help cardiologists as they perform life-saving procedures, including stent implants and pacemaker implants. A name has finally been chosen for the Metronet Forestfield Airport link. High Wickham Station will be the official name once it's operational at the end of next year. More than 3,500 people who live in the city of Kalamunda voted for the name. Now with a look at today's money markets, here's Steve Daglian from Comsec. Good afternoon. Even though it was a cracking day for our market, in fact, shares up about 1.5%, uh, it wasn't quite enough to push us higher over the course of the week. And you can blame that on Thursday, which was the worst day in a fortnight as well. We had shares down 2.5% just yesterday. Now, uh, today there were a few areas of the market that really helped, and it included the banks like Westpac, which rose about 3%, uh, many investment management companies like AMP, IWF, Magellan, they all rose quite impressively. Woolies and Coles that have placed restrictions on some of their products, including toilet paper, of course, they both jumped about 1%. And one of the worst performers today was Qantas, which dropped 9%. And that's because investors had their first chance to make sense of uh, plenty of announcements that were out in the past 24 hours, including job cuts and plans to cut costs by $15 billion in the next three years. The Aussie dollar finally sits at about 68.8 US. For the first time in three months, the Eiffel Tower is open to visitors. Hundreds lined up to get into the famous landmark, which had been closed due to the coronavirus pandemic. Once inside, the experience took their breath away, but not for the reason you might think. It's the beacon in the City of Lights, and from today, the Eiffel Tower is shining once more. Open to the public for the first time since the pandemic hit. For 103 days, the crown jewel of Paris was closed. 
the longest time since World War II. I decided to do five days here in Paris. Now it's a bit uh, less people here, and so we think it's maybe a good idea. It's great because I never was in the Eiffel Tower and it's our last day here, so we hope that we can do it and it fits perfectly. Open again, but far from business as normal. There's stringent health checks at the gates, keeping away all but the keenest of sightseers. And the lifts are still closed, meaning the only way up is the stairs, all 675 of them. On this day last year, 23,000 people made that climb. Today, just 1,500. It's cost the local economy dearly. We lost uh, 27 million euros uh, during this period. This is Patrick Branco Ruvu. He's in charge of what is arguably the world's most iconic landmark. Confident things will soon be back to normal. We open uh, and nothing bad happen, uh, it's what I hope. I know that uh, we will uh, recover. A recovery which could come far more quickly than first thought. The EU is set to decide whether to open its borders to foreign tourists as early as next week. Christian Gapset, 7 News. Twin giant panda cubs have celebrated 100 days since they were born at the Chengdu Research Base in southwest China. The pair, who were named in support of Wuhan during the coronavirus outbreak, feasted on rice dumplings to mark the occasion. They're definitely big eaters. The pair weighed 100 grams at birth and are now 5 kilos each. Coming up on Perth's afternoon news, Ruby Princess Bombshell as a victim's widow takes the stand. And what are your rights if you're ever lucky enough to dig up buried bundles of cash? This week in the Sunday Times, Charlie Albone shares his secrets to successful gardening. Inspirational ideas and practical tips to get the best out of your garden. From the star of Better Homes and Gardens, make Charlie Albone part of your weekend. Only in the Sunday Times. They all wish they felt 10 years younger. Just need to get back to being the person that I was so proud to be once. There's no going back. OK. In just 10 days, their lives will be transformed for good. Oh, my God. The most heartwarming, life-changing show of the year. Oh, my. 10 Years Younger in 10 Days, Monday on 7. Well, so far, 2020's been a challenge. So this year, we've introduced some new options for Dry July. We're calling it Dry-ish July. To help raise funds for cancer patients, you can be a fortnight Frankie, a three-week Wendell, or a fully dry die. Old school. Go as dry as you're willing to try to help people affected by cancer. Sign up today at dryjuly.com. your mouldy grout again. Mr. Wet Wall installs stylish mould-resistant waterproof panels over your existing tiles. Done in a day. Marble, slate and stone finishes at the fraction of the cost of tiling. Search Mr. Wet Wall. Craft Acor's end of financial year sale. Overstocked. 50,000 square metres reduced. No one has a range like Craft Acor. For large orders, make us an offer. Cannington, Joondalup, Mandra, Osmond Park and South Fremantle. Craft Acor. Best tiles, best prices. Bring on the dirtiness. Muddiness, sauciness, and how did that get under there-iness? Because with a great range of cleaning solutions, Gold Cruise gives you cleanliness. Keep things light and airy with delicious Smith's Poppables. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, finally. One pop and you're in love. Professional, affordable and reliable. That's the Rich Tech promise for all your plumbing and electrical needs. Hot water systems, block drains, burst pipes. We're there within the hour. Zero dollar call-out fee. Rich Tech, where service meets quality. Let's get Rich Tech. At Domain, we want to help you make it yours with our amazing range of customizable Australian-made furniture and bedding. Choose from a range of sizes, fabrics, colours, timber stains and more to create your perfect piece. Make it bold, make it fit, make it yours with our expertise to guide you every step of the way. So come in store and start customising. We're ready. Take advantage of 60 months interest-free, available now and make it yours at Domain. Domain. 
Get your Woolies worth and save $10 off your online pickup shop when you enter code SHOP10 at the checkout. Minimum spend applies. Visit Woolworths.com.au and start shopping today. That's why I pick Woolies. A senior ex executive at Carnival Australia has been grilled at the Ruby Princess inquiry over the testing failure on board, while a grieving widow has told of her heartbreaking loss. Well, there have been quite a few fiery encounters right from the get-go since the Ruby Princess inquiry began, mostly from its irascible commissioner, Brett Walker SC. That sure, certainly man. continued today in a line of questioning to a Carnival senior executive, a man by the name of Peter Little, who is in charge of guest experiences, a rather unfortunate title, given we know what happened to so many of the guests once they disembarked the Ruby Princess on, on March 19. He kept on uh, pursuing the same line of questioning as vigorously as counsel assisting Richard Beasley. His main inquiry is the swabs, why there were so few swabs on board the Ruby Princess. It wasn't my, and is not my responsibility that, that area of the business. Whose responsibility was it? It, sit, it sits with the medical services department. Peter Little offered a statement to begin his testimony today, offering his sympathies to everybody who has been so adversely affected by this tragedy, none more so than the person who was in the witness box before him. Jeanette Moore's husband, Bob, died from COVID-19 after disembarking the Ruby Princess on March 19. She said he had little more than a sniffle the day after and that it was actually their local GP who insisted they get tested. Our doctors got together and he rang straight back within five minutes and said, cool. Get an ambulance. Yes, OK, you've said that in Paris. Yep. So, yep. Mrs Moore also testified that she did not hear herself of any advertising from Carnival on board about free health checkups. A judge has ruled a bitter dispute over the owner of almost half a million dollars in cash unearthed at a construction site will be decided in a courtroom. Two tradies who made the discovery thought they did the right thing by handing it in, but now they're staking a claim. Cameron Price reports. Yeah, it is a remarkable case and today in the Supreme Court a ruling that the rightful owner of a hidden stash containing close to half a million dollars will be decided by a judge. The money uncovered last year by two tradies during the demolition of a Gold Coast home. Inside a plastic container, old and weathered banknotes to the value of $488,000. The tradies did what under law is required and went to authorities with their fine. The police station was across the road and we took it straight over there and handed it in. The police stated that if the true owner couldn't be found, we've got a right to that money. But they're not alone. Another three parties are claiming they are the rightful owner of the money, including the tradies' boss and the landowner. We will have all the details about their claims and what experts say you should do if you find abandoned money or goods at 6pm. A warning tonight for country home buyers with reports some builders are hiking their prices to take advantage of government housing grants. Noel Brunning joins us from the GWN 7 News Desk with the details. A woman in Albany says she feels ripped off after she agreed on a price for a new home, only for the builder to phone back days later, adding over $30,000 to the price and offering no explanation. UWA scientists have discovered just how clever the Shark Bay dolphins are, teaching themselves new hunting and foraging techniques instead of learning from their mums, which is the usual pattern. And this beautiful home in Eagle Bay has won this year's top prize in the Housing Industry Association Awards for the South West. It was built by Anton Smith. A zoo in Belgium has shown off its newest addition to the public for the first time. The one-day-old baby gorilla was seen suckling on its mother at the Antwerp Zoo. The gender of the baby is unknown, but it is the second Western Lowland gorilla to be born at the zoo since 2018. The species is considered critically endangered in the wild. The Eagles have made some changes to their lineup ahead of their clash against Port Adelaide. Basil Zemplis joins us next with the details. Saturday, it's back to back footy from Metricon. First up at 2 o'clock on 7, West Coast, Port Adelaide.
Then 5.30 on mate. Oh, five, yes. Fremantle fighting for win number one, taking on the surging suns. There's no stopping them. Go to the footy on seven. Footy's back and so is the game. We'll discuss the highs, the heroes, that hub, plus hear from the coaches. Join us for the game, live from Optus Stadium, Sunday, 5.30. Now's a great time to sort your health cover with NIB. Join any combined hospital and extras cover online by June 30 and you'll get a virtual Visa e-gift card valued up to $400. Join NIB today. It's worth it. It's Tech Time Madness at JB with prices smashed. Like a crazy 20% of Microsoft Service Pro 7, Pro X and Laptop 3. Grab a crazy 300 bucks off this premium HP laptop. And 10% off Apple Mac computers. Extended opening hours until June 30. JB, you've done it again. Macca's new cheesy burgers are your favourites, only cheesier. A golden mozzarella patty with 100% Aussie beef or chicken. And mozzarella sticks are back. Macca's new cheesy range, only for a limited time. Quality, style, exceptional value. A Mazda stands out. At the Mazda Standout End of Financial Year event, get a Mazda CX-5 Max from 32,990 drive away. Search Mazda offers now. You're relying on our network more, so we're accelerating the rollout of Telstra 5G, giving more people and businesses access to fast download speeds in more places than ever. Teaser's buttons. Find them in store now. Choose a King Coil mattress at Domain. Proudly Australian made and owned. Up to 60% off King Coil intimate mattresses and ensembles. The Thea Queen mattress. Four feels, one hot price. $699. The limited edition King Coil CXX features a three-zone conformer coil system. While Ravello offers King Coil's Reflex Plus support at a great price. Relax in complete comfort when you add an AH Beard adjustable base. Priced from just $999. Shop in store or online now at Domain. Classic cottage pie, spicy lamb stew, gooey pear crumble. The best winter dinners on Better Homes. Tonight. You're watching Seven's Afternoon News. Basil joins us now. Baz, what's happening today in sport? Thank you for asking, Amelia, and good afternoon. The West Coast Eagles say they are absolutely thrilled to have five Indigenous players in the team this weekend, including first gamer Jermaine Jones. Yeah, it's his second opportunity. He's he from Geelong, played seven or eight games there, and uh, he was at the SSP last pick of the, the draft for us, so he's, I think he's got number 47, uh, which is pretty high. Uh, he's living with Tim, and um, they're very good friends, and he's done it the hard way, so he'll bring a, hopefully a bit of toughness in the front half. He's got good speed, and um, he can put a bit of pressure on as well, so I think that makes it five Indigenous boys in our side, which is great for... Lewis Jetta's 200th, along with Jack Darlings. Um, they're really proud of our Indigenous uh, heritage and, and playing so many boys, is, uh, it's a privilege. The Eagles play Port Adelaide tomorrow. You'll see it on 7 from 2pm. Hawthorne is sticking by Jonathan Patton, but Alistair Clarkson admits the key forward is well below his best. Emotions are still high at Waverley Park as the Hawks look to honour the late John Kennedy Sr. this weekend. His legacy might be most felt at Hawthorne, but it was while coaching North Melbourne where John Kennedy Sr. first met a young Alistair Clarkson. I was a vulnerable 17 or 18 year old lad who had just come down from the country and uh, needed to be shown the, the right way and how to, uh, how to live and how to play the game. Those sorts of uh, things never, never leave you when you have people who have had a positive impact on the way that you live your life. Fittingly, the Hawks face the Kangaroos this Sunday. They'll honour one of the game's true legends with a minute's silence before the first bounce. Jonathan Patton given a reprieve at the selection table. He's still well below what we think he's capable of. The Hawks recruit is yet to take a contested mark in his three games in brown and gold and has kicked just three goals. In 12 games last year, Mitchell Lewis took 27 contested marks and kicked 20 majors. He needs a period of time just to um, 
you know, get himself accustomed to the rigours of, of the game again. He's one of footy's Mr Nice Guys, but St Kilda saw a different side of Brett Ratton after their loss to Collingwood. No, nah, there was more of the bit of the tough love. Normally, Ratton would call for the mouth guards midweek to bring back the competitive edge ahead of tomorrow's clash with Richmond, but in 2020, that isn't an option. You can't train as a team. <laughs> so <laughs> we, in our little groups there, yeah, there was a bit more of an edge. Andrew McCormack, 7 News. Thanks, Andrew. Wild celebrations have erupted around the world for Liverpool fans after they broke a 30-year title drought and claimed their first ever Premiership League Championship. Liverpool were crowned champions after Chelsea beat Man City 2-1 this morning. Well, unfortunately, I have no words. It's unbelievable. It's much more than I ever thought what would be possible. First Premier League title, that is. Man City needed to beat Chelsea to stop Liverpool from claiming the title they weren't able to. As we've heard, Matilda's players say they're thrilled with this morning's announcement that Australia and New Zealand will co-host the Women's World Cup in 2023. The event will be a huge boost for the sport from grassroots right through to the elite level and will provide global attention for our Aussie team. For us, we play our best football in front of our fans. Um, I think that gives us obviously an advantage and um, yeah, it just makes, it makes us so excited. The tournament is set to be held across 12 cities in Australia and New Zealand, including right here in Perth, the final though, in Sydney. All righty, now Adam Simpson on the Gold Coast. They need to win this weekend. We'll hear more from him, Amelia, in our bulletin at six. See right. you then. We'll see you then. Thank you, Baz. We're in for a wet weekend. I'll have your weather details next. Sworn enemies will meet, but behind their smiles... Cheers, guys. ..they're plotting to take her down for good. This is their life. There's something going on. It's time to get rid of her. She's getting ready for the ultimate double cross. It's like the Last Supper. But whose Last Supper will it be? Angela's exactly where we want him to be. Everyone in this room's a threat. Bon appetit. Can she survive TV's biggest week? If you're going to shoot your shot, make sure you hit. Yeah, it's game on. Ooh la la. Big Brother's Last Supper, Sunday at 7 on 7. Julia, how was your vacation? Oh, you've, uh, you've had a, um... Yes, I've had an epic reminder done for Aldi special buys. Turn your face into an epic reminder for this Saturday and get work boots for $34.99. A high-vis jacket for $39.99 and a wet-dry vacuum for $69.99. Only at Aldi. Good. Different. As credit to you, here's up to $120 credit from us. Add any selected month-to-month -month mobile plan with Vodafone and get the credit you deserve over 12 months. Find out more at vodafone.com.au. Ready? Want to sell something for instant cash? We're open. Looking to buy from a huge range of quality second-hand goods for less? We're open. Cash Converters. Find us online or visit us in-store. Mechanical services and repairs. Air conditioning, electrical and lighting repairs. AutoSpark will find, fix, regas or service it with the best advice. If your car won't start, call AutoSpark. Get up to 50% off everything during Bedshed Stock Take Sale. Plus, get an extra 10% off store-wide this end of financial year weekend. So hurry in and save at Bedshed. No one's better in the bedroom. You'll find a massive selection of pots of all shapes and sizes at John Cole's Nursery. Designs you're unlikely to see anywhere else. Styles to suit any height. Quantity you... So do drive safely as it bounces back. Meanwhile, your freeway southbound is holding up Osh Reef Road, Vincent Street down to Mill Point Road, and it's on and off the brakes from Berrigan Drive to Russell Road. So been a Water Can Stars 2020 winner for WA's most satisfied home insurance customers. Get a quote at rac.com.au or traffic on Monday. Now, Fuel Watch. Perth's petrol prices brought to you by Fuel Watch and 7 News.
checking the weather now. We had a beautiful sunny morning in Perth. 21 was our maximum, but we have some severe weather heading our way. Looking at the national forecast, partly cloudy in Sydney tomorrow, similar for Brisbane with a top of 23, early frost in Canberra and a cold day in Melbourne, just 13. Back to Perth and showers could rain on our Phase 4 parade. We could even see a thunderstorm tomorrow, 21 the top. That storm will reach into Sunday and we could be woken by some pretty strong pre-dawn winds too. And there's no relief for the working week. Storms and 20 on Monday. Showers easing Tuesday, 19 on Wednesday before it starts to clear up and we see the sun again on Thursday and Friday. And just before we go, police in the US state of North Carolina have been called in after shocked residents discovered a black bear in their backyard. The large bear drew a crowd of intrigued neighbours as well as reporters and the officers who cordoned off the surrounding area. Any concerns the 2.5 metre tall beast would turn on them were quickly eased when the bear dozed off. Police say if it's left alone, it'll eventually leave. I'll see you with Rick, Sue and Baz for 7 News at 6. Stay with us for The Chase Australia. It says here, I saw her at the corner of my eye, a white female yelling, help, help, someone's trying to kill me. That's not what happened. Peter Falconio was shot by a gunman who attempted to abduct his girlfriend, Joanne Lees. They found the killer. He was the murderer. Or did they? The case you think is closed. 34 inconsistencies. A murder you thought was solved. There's no projectile, there's no casing, no blood splatter. If somebody gets shot in the head, it makes a big mess, right? It's what you don't know that will shock the world. No one doubts me. Can you help me out? Did I run to that side? OK, report. I couldn't believe this had never seen the light of day. We reopen the case. Without a body and without a motive, you've lost two essential parts to a murder. Did they get the right man? We are going to be very unpopular. You've got a murderer loose, haven't you? The event that will make world headlines. There is so much more to this story than people will ever imagine. Murder in the Outback, this July on 7. These four strangers must work as a team to win thousands of dollars.